Hello community! Bloom LLMs, the full-fledged version with 176 billion parameters. Now, I showed you that there are a lot of different LLM models, from some baby models, from some medium-sized model, to some models like Palm that have half a trillion parameter. And I have a video here where I showed you the Flan T5 XL model that we can run an inference task on a free Colab notebook. As I showed you here, we have here a 3 billion parameter model. Now, in one of my last videos, I showed you the upgrade to the Flying T5XXL model. This is already an 11 billion parameter model. And we used here the hugging face endpoints here. They use itself, again, the AWS A100 GPU. And I showed you the code for the inference task of Flying T5XXL. Now you see the jump to the next model with half a trillion parameter is huge. So a lot of you, my viewers, ask, hey, what about the 176 full-fledged blue model? Because I only have on my channel here videos about Bloom on a free Colab notebook. And this, of course, is only a baby model with just some single billion parameters but not the full-fledged 176 billion parameter model. And Bloom needs more power, simply more power. So we have to go to AWS. We select the biggest machine learning instance, the P4DE, with 1.1 terabyte memory. And we apply SageMaker deep learning containers. We apply deep Java library serving and there's a very special technique we're going to apply, and it is called model parallelism. We will not apply the pipeline parallelism from Hugging Face with its accent within Accelerate, but we go for the tensor parallelism. Now, the tensor parallelism or the deep space model here at AWS, they have the benefit of low latency with multiple GPUs simultaneously. If you want to learn more about the deep speed inference, here this is the best literature I could find to this topic, enabling efficient inference of transformer models at unprecedented scale. By Microsoft, here is the archive preprint. Have a look at this documentation. Now, if you look for the deep Java library serving and the deep speed model parallel inference, the best literature I could find was the original AWS machine learning blog where in September 22, they described in detail here how you deploy large models on Amazon SageMaker. Anyway, what I would like that you take away that there is a deep Java library that is open source, high level, engine agnostic framework for deep learning. And we will use it as a model serving solution. It is a high performance universal model serving solution that is programming language agnostic, PyTorch, TensorFlow, Apache MXNet, whatever there is. Now, if you want to have a deep dive, there's the Amazon SageMaker developer guide with more with about 4,000 pages. And at page 2026, I would recommend the chapter on real-time inference to really learn more about this topic. So, in summary, we can say, Large language models can be difficult to host, especially for low latency inference tasks, simply because of their sheer size. This is valued for models with more than 100 billion parameters. They can be too big to fit into the memory of a single GPU of a single accelerator. So you have more or less three solutions. First, a simple and slow approach is to use the CPU memory and stream the model parameters sequentially to your accelerator. And you know what's going to happen. You're going to create a bottleneck between your CPU and your GPU. The second solution is a little bit more clever. You compress the model. You squeeze the model so that it can fit on a single GPU. Now, this is a rather complex technique, such as quantization, puning, distillation. And I will show you later on that we have something like an LLM int 8 that we can use. But this requires time, expertise, and in some cases, it can reduce the accuracy and the generalization of your language model. 
Now, solution number three is the professional solution. We are working here on AWS clusters, so we use model parallelism. Here we have two ways to go. As I showed you, either you go like Hugging Face with their accelerator engine, or we go with AWS DeepSpeed. I will show you that the later will deliver some better low latency inference without impacting the accuracy of the model. I think this is it from the theoretical standpoint. We have now a basic understanding. Hey, let's just jump right into the code. So now here we go. Surf LLMs, large language models on AWS SageMaker with DeepSpeed container. So we run an inference task and we run the Bloom full 176 billion parameter model. And we will use here AWS SageMaker with the latest container. So we use DeepSpeed and Deep Java Library. Deep Java Library provides the serving net for network, while DeepSpeed is the key sharding library we leverage to enable hosting of large language models. So here we go. Four easy steps for us. At first, as always, you are familiar with this. We have a large pre-trained NLP model. This is on Hugging Face, and we download the model from Hugging Face. Then we deploy this model now on Amazon SageMaker across multiple GPUs. We will use eight GPUs, but on a single SageMaker machine learning instance. And then, as I told you, we will use the Deep Java Library Serving and, in particular, the Tensor Parallelism from DeepSpeed to optimize here that we achieve low latency in our generative AI task. And this is text generation, like Jack Jet GPT. So here we go. No, no, no. Here we go. First, of course, is, yeah, if you are not familiar with AWS, there is something called a software development hint for Python here on AWS. It's called Boto3 which allows Python developers to write software that makes use of services like Amazon S3 or EC2 or whatever. And you're not going to believe AWS CLI is a command line interface to Amazon Web Services. This is all there is. Now, as I told you, we have here on Hugging Face, we have a model on Hugging Face. Let's have a look at the model. Here is it. Microsoft, yeah, maybe a little bit bigger. Microsoft Bloom Deep Speed. Inference, this is exactly what we need. And now integer eight. So this means we have more or less a eight bit matrix multiplication. So this is a custom int eight version of the original Bloom weights to make it fast to use with the deep speed inference engine, which we will use on AWS. And we want to implement tensor parallelism for low latency in our inference task. This repo here. Uh, in this repo, the tensor is split into eight shards, of course, because we have eight target GPUs, a 100 GPUs. So yes, 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 beautiful. So you know, this is exactly the model that we're looking for. Now, I know what you say. You might say, hey, eight bit matrix multiplication. Are you joking? Look at this paper. There's always a scientific paper that tells you something. This here, you know, papers with code, I love it. So LLM int 8 is an 8-bit matrix multiplication for transformer at scale, August 2022. And here with our method, a 175 billion parameter, 16 or 32-bit checkpoint can be loaded, converted to int 8, and used immediately without performance degradation. This is amazing if you think about it. This is made possible by understanding and working around property of highly systematic emergent features in transformer language model that dominate attention and transformer predictive performance. So they developed a two-part quantization procedure, this LLM int 8. So first, vector-wise quantization, with, yes, 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 you can read all of this yourself, never mind. It just tells us we can use it. So here we go. We have now here on our hugging face Microsoft Bloom DeepSpeak Inference Int8. 
exactly as I showed you here, Microsoft Bloom Deep Speed Inference Int 8. This is exactly the model that we upload now to S3. Done. Beautiful. Now, SageMaker is a little bit complicated because this here is the sentence, SageMaker needs the model to be in the tar bowl format. So, and in Plasia, we create a model with the inference code, code to shorten the endpoint creation time. This we already done in some other videos I showed you. We create a model with the inference code inside. So we kick off a multi-threaded approach to download the model weights in the container using exactly what I told you before, AWS CLI. So tarball, if you're not familiar with it, we have more or less three files. First one is model. Now in our model Python file, this is the key file which handle any requests for serving the model. It is also responsible for loading the model from S3 after the endpoint on AWS has been spun up. The model is loaded into the temporary space on the container because SageMaker maps the temporary to the Amazon EBS volume. Yes, 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 you don't have to care about this. The requirements text file is simply the library needed to, ins to be installed when the container starts up. And our serving property, this is so easy. Normally we only have the one line of code and this is something about deep space, deep speed. I'm gonna show you in a second. So we import SageMaker, Bojo, Time, JSON, everything, everything, everything. So we create variables, initialize them to create the endpoint and we leverage Bojo 3 for this. Yes, standard, have, don't have to talk about it. Now, what you have to be specifically careful about is which large model inference container image with, with DGL serving you will use. My goodness. So to make it easy, large model inference is simply called LMI. Deep learning containers are called DLCs. And those are Docker images on Amazon ECR. So these containers, and this is the most important sentence, these containers include all the necessary component you need, the libraries, the drivers, to host those large models on Amazon SageMaker or EC2 infrastructure. So this is it. And these containers are available for you. So you just have to find the right model. So let's jump in here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And you see here, large model inference container. And we are here already. What we need, we have here the deep Java library serving version 020. This is the latest version with deep speed. We have here the Hugging Face Transformers and of course the Hugging Face Accelerate. We will not use the Accelerate, but we will use deep speed. But anyway, this works with all transformers that are available on Hugging Face. And this is the reason why it is so beautiful to have these containers. So we have here the job type. Job type, of course, is inference. We have here eight GPUs. The Python version is 3.8. And this is here whoops, exactly what we need. So we go back we say, beautiful. Now we know what we are doing. <laughs> You're joking, I know. And here we have our image identifier. This is exactly what I just showed you here, deep speed 75116, 75116, Amazon, yes, beautiful. If you want to know more about the image URI, beautiful, here is HMega image URI retrieve, everything you need to know if you want to have something else. So as I showed you, first topic is create the tarball and upload it is to our S3 location, beautiful. So now this is a little bit of strange notation, but hey, we have just here the magic write file command. So we write the code here of this uh, Jupyter Notebook cell simply in this Python file. So you remember our library, our, our directory is code underscore bloom176. And now the file name is model. And you know why we know them? We need the model? Yes, because the tarball needs the model and the requirements and you know which other files we will use in a second. So beautiful. So here we go. As you know it, 
It is from the transformers, from Hugging Face. We import auto configuration. We import the auto model for causal language model. We import the tokenizer, an auto tokenizer, a very general tokenizer. Yes, yes, yes. And I just wanted to show you. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? That we have here more or less two functions. We have a function that defines get the model, and we have a function that defines how to handle the model. Now, in to get the model, you're not going to believe it. This is what you know. This is what we have done in dozens of videos when we work with LLMs or, or sentence transformers or pure transformers or whatever. We have a tokenizer, auto tokenizer from pre trained model. And this is our model director where we have our pre trained model on Hugging Face. You know this. And then when we have the tokenizer, we say the model is the auto model for causal language model from config. And here we have our auto config from our pre trained model directory. And we have here float 16. So you see, this is absolutely what you are familiar with. And then here, of course, we have deep speed and we have here the inference. So we have the model, we have the base directory, we have our checkpoints. But this is all that you know already. And the function simply returns the model and the tokenizer. N no problem at all. Now, the second function that we define here to handle the model, or handle, is easy. Look at the commands here. You are familiar with this. We have here our input tokens. So we apply our tokenizer on our data. We want to have PyTorch tensors returned. We have the padding activated. And then we just say, OK, our output is, of course, model generate applied on our input tokens. This is the standard procedure that you know and that you love. And after we have defined this output, we can say tokenizers batch decode special skip special tokens is true like i showed you in my the last video before my last video <laughs> and so now we have our model and we have our output this is it this is all that you are familiar with input token and the output and we have here everything that you know and that you love so as i told you we have two other files the files here, the requirements is, of course, here, BOTO3 and the AWS CLI. And for the serving properties, I told you that we just need to define the engine that we use deep speed. More or less, this is it. Yes, yes, yes. Create the model file and upload it. Yes. So here we have it. Create the model file and upload it to our S3. Session upload data. Yes. Finally. Done. Now, yeah, there is something about security. We don't care about these two cells. So to create now an endpoint, an active endpoint, we have three steps. This is it. That, that's all that we need to do. So create the model using now the image container and the tarball. Then create the endpoint configuration file with some parameters. And we have more or less three parameters. It is the instance. Now the instance I told you, it's the P4 instance. Beautiful. Then you have more or less two timeouts. You have the model data download timeout in seconds. You set this to 2400. And you have the container startup health check timeout in seconds. You also set this to 2400. And with these three parameters, you are done with your endpoint config. And then you create, oops, you create, the endpoint using the endpoint config that we just had here. Now, there are some tensor parallel degree parameter. We are working with eight GPUs, so you guess what is the parameter we're going to insert here. If you want to know more about this, there is some excellent literature, and I already showed you some other uh, research papers concerning here, inference that you can run here with deep speed. Now, next point, create a SageMaker model. Now we create a SageMaker model. Hmm. Sometimes I'm amazed sometimes what I write. Yeah, it, it, is, it is really amazing. 
So we use here the Amazon Elastic Container Registry image provided by and the model artifact from this yes, 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 setup we configure. Eight tensor parallel degree, I told you, what a coincidence. And here we go, the primary container. Here is our identifier from our image. And here is our bucket and our uh, prefix from S3. And we defined the tensor parallel degree with eight TPUs. That's it. Yes, volume size in gigabyte. Yes, 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 forget about it. And then, and this is almost the last step, create a SageMaker endpoint. Now, isn't this nice? We can use any instances with multiple GPU for testing. Yes, I know, but we decided to go here for machine learning, the P4DE, 24X large. And then, as I told you, we have two uh, timeouts to define the model data download timeout in seconds and the container stop health check in seconds. And this is it. With these three parameters, we have the config file ready. And you're not going to believe what's happened now. We create the SageMaker endpoint. We say now SageMaker client create endpoint. And this is it. I know. Simple, easy, beautiful. So wait for the endpoint to be created. This can take a couple of minutes <laughs> or longer. I would like to stress the meaning of longer. <laughs> yes, you can look at snippets. Yes, yes, yes. While creating, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, and now we are ready finally to run inference. And you know, here we have, for example, three further parameter that you know. The first is temperature. The second is the new tokens. And then the third one is about the beam search, the number of beams that you want, or a greedy. So temperature you are familiar with, the number of token is clear. More token, of course, will increase the prediction time. Well, what a coincidence. And look, it is, it is absolutely the same as I showed you in my Flan T5 video. Flan T5 XL and Flan T5 XXL. This is absolutely the same. So we have here, our client where we invoke now the endpoint. And we have, let's look at the parameters at first. We have here the no repeat n-gram size, also a parameter you know, the number of beams, five or 12, I recommend 16 if you really wanna be creative. Temperature, okay, dot eight, max new tokens, set it to, I don't know, 256, 512, why be shy here? Minimum length, only five. This is really conservative. And then, of course, you have your prompt. This is the prompt. And after this prompt, after this text here, the system will tell, go on, and depending on the number of new tokens that you want, will continue with the text input that you provided here. Now, here in this example, we have Amazon.com. AWS is the best. And then you want here an answer from the machine. Well, what a coincidence. So this is it. You see, there's really nothing to it. There's just a little bit of AWS stuff happening around us because we really want to optimize here the execution of this. Of this. And if you want to follow along, this notebook is, of course, an official AWS notebook. And all the credits go to AWS for providing this notebook. I just modified it. I just put in some explanation for us. But otherwise, this is all credits go to AWS. And you can download this notebook here. As you see, GitHub, AWS, Amazon SageMaker examples, inference, real time, Bloom, 176 billion. And here, the deep Java library, deep speed, deep speed deploy. Python notebook. This is the link. Go there, download it. Half of the explanation is gone, but this is just when you have to see it the first time. Now you know what you're going to execute, and now you know that you are familiar with what you see. Conclusion, we demonstrated to use the SageMaker large model inference containers to host Bloom 176. Yes, there is also I don't know if you know this little company, it's called Meta, Meta AI. They also have some models here, the 30 billion opt model. I'm no fan of this model, so there's a reason why I show you the Bloom model. 
with 176 billion uh, parameters. But anyway, we use here the model parallel technique with multiple GPUs on a single SageMaker ML instance. Everything else, yes, you see here, you have quotas if you want about timeout. And then, of course, as always on AWS, we delete the endpoint. In case the endpoint failed, we still want to delete the model. And we can delete the model checkpoint from S3 also. So everything clean, tidy, beautiful. There are no costs occur to us. This is it. As you see, this is more or less a simple notebook. It has very much the same content. If you look here at the model, we have here our tokenizer. We have here our download from Hugging Face. So I think you should feel rather familiar here. It is absolutely the same code sequence that, you, that we use here. It is just a little bit more complicated because we are running this on a highly distributed engine. AWS instance. So this is it. If you want and if you like this video, if you upvote this video, if you want, next time we can connect to AWS and I'll show you this in real time. Until then, I say thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and I see you in my next video.